So guys, I got these big, beautiful trio axles on here. No more breakage on that. Uh-uh, not at all. They are awesome. However, there was a little bit of a gear noise. And from what I'm reading online in the groups and all that, I need to take the diffs out, take them apart, and move the shim away from behind the ring gear side, put it to the other, and reassemble. That's probably what I'm going to end up doing. So, guys, in this video, we'll tear these axles apart, try to get them to run a little smoother, and then we're going to take them out for a nice, leisurely Sunday drive. Yep, just putter along a little bit, you know, maybe some 1S. Yeah. Anyways, take a look. Here it is, ready to be torn open. Now, I mentioned that I bent the horn on the uh, last video, but I didn't show it. Well, there it is. Not a fault of the horn. Not It's not designed for this kind of abuse. Uh, but you know, things like this just happen. So I went digging for the stock servo and I got the 614 and 614S. Did a little looking up. The S is the one that comes in here. And this one actually has steel gears. This one right here is what must have came in the laser nut. Now, this servo is going back in along with this servo. And it'll be in there until I find the actual servo saver that I really want to try. Um, I want a servo saver like this, but I want it strong enough to require you to have steel gears. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, swapping the servo out as well. I'm going to get the drive shafts off and just listen to these axles and just see what I may need to do. Okay, so listen to this. So you can absolutely hear the gears mesh, but it's not, it's not binding. Almost like the pinion gear. So the too far in or too far out. I'm going to pull these off and see what, see what we've got underneath those. Maybe there'll be a wear pattern on the pinion gear itself. And maybe I can get an idea of what needs to happen. This is the front side right here. Hmm, interesting. Looking at the pinion gear, it could possibly go in a little bit. Now going in, well that should be easier than going out, obviously, because I could add a little shim right underneath the pinion and see what we end up with. With the shim under the pinion, let's see. That sounds a lot better. Can still hear them, but everything is spinning freely. Okay, I think we're going to try that on the back side and just see where we're at there. This shim right here is actually a 6x8x.5 by by millimeter. It's a little bit thick. We'll just have to see how that works. As you're looking at this pinion gear, it looks like it needs to go in as well. So, it's been a while since I've messed with ring and pinions like this, but luckily that grease actually gave me the wear pattern. Kind of like if you set up a real ring and pinion, you put the grease on there and you spin it over a little bit and you can actually see the wear pattern. That's kind of what I got with this. That one was a bit much. This is what you really don't want. I'm going to see if I can find a thinner shim. I found a 0 0.3 shim. Sounds a lot better. So I guess I'll just go ahead and put this thing together and see what I got. Looking this over, that bar, sway bar, is actually bent. This side looks good. So try to straighten that out and get everything tightened up because it's also just a little bit loose in there. Well, it's bent a little worse than I thought. So that's straightened up and hopefully it's ready to go. Now, these right here, these are the rear limit straps off of a Traxxas UDR. Got them at both ends. They're working, but I am getting some 105 millimeter uh, uh, limit straps because they work, but they also have a stretch to them. You can see a little bit right there. So. They are helping keep the shocks together, but, um, you know, they may be marginal 
and a real bad hit, which I've had a few bad hits. Shocks are still alive, so it is what it is. It's all back together and ready to go. I do got to tell you guys, I'm happy with the silver axles. You can see them, they look good. Yeah. Well, let's see if it's any better. Yeah, it's better. Not totally gone, but it's better. I kind of think it's more in that back where I was having a little bit more of an issue getting the uh, thing to actually go. You know, every time I come here, I've got to do my donuts, right? Got to. <laughs> okay. Hard smack. That was a good smack, though. Already. Oh, jeez. Right into bushes. Right out of the bushes. In the bushes. Never finish in the bushes. Uh, that's an abbreviated piece from a uh, particular cartoon that was pretty epic. Comment down below if you know where, where I kind of got that from. I think I can get that. Oh yeah. The goal is to come up this peak, land safely on the other side. Yeah. Um, not what I planned. We'll try it again. Maybe I can hit it like I want to. Nope. The third time the charm? Oh. oh, I did not plan to do that. <laughs> it took it. That was pretty serious air. I mean, I almost missed it. I wasn't expecting it to go up so high. <laughs> so, in the end, took a little bit of shimming on the pinions to get these things to quiet down. The back, I still think I'm going to go into that one. I do feel that I may still need to back the ring gear off and then bring the pinion in to get that mesh about right. The front, I think that one actually worked out pretty good, so I'm going to leave that alone. But I will get into the back a little bit, but I'll just do that off camera. Yes, I do stuff off camera, believe it or not. I actually go drive with my buddies off camera. It happens. It really does. So, but anyway, hopefully you guys liked the video, the driving part. Maybe I was able to show you guys some things with the uh, axles and all that. So if you have the noises... Maybe you have an idea of where to look now. Um, yeah. And as far as the shims go, I'll try to find some of those on eBay. Hopefully I'll remember and get those in the description. Six by eight by 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. I'll see if there's an assortment. If there is, I'll get that down below for you guys. Make it nice and easy. The links 
you know, that's part of my thing to do that. It just makes things easy for you guys to find. So, in that description, there are links. Amen, eBay, Amazon, and Horizon. So, use those links. Um, go there, check out, and it helps out. So, yeah, it gives a little bit of a commission. Helps me afford things like this. So, in that description, use those links. Make sure you're subscribed. Click that like, ring that bell, and thank you all for watching. If you like what you see, hit that like button and subscribe. And if you really like it, ring that bell so you get all the new content when it comes on out. Now, uh, starting up very soon, I'm going to start a giveaway for all channel members, and it is going to be monthly. It will be a giveaway, simple, easy payment way to double your return on your subscription fees. So yeah, you might want to check that out. Guys, thank you all for watching.